Welcome to the vSAN Ready Node Size and TCO tool. Today we're going to look at an all flash cluster first. Now we're going to start by selecting our workload. In this case, we're going to take a look at an Oracle database. So we'll select database. And then for workload type, we'll select Oracle. Now we'll need to put in the total number of virtual machines. In this case, we're going to put in 100. And then we'll need to select the amount of storage for those. If we don't know how much on a per VM, we can put the total amount. and It'll automatically divide and fill this out for us. So in this case, 60 terabytes would be 600 gigabytes per VM. We can also look at the cluster settings. Here you can see the assumptions on CPU, drive bays, the sockets, and the number of cores. So we're going to up the number of cores since I know we want to use 16 core servers instead of 12. We're also going to up the clock speed. We've chosen a faster processor. We can look at assumptions on CPU headroom, on host failure, uh, if we want to have additional redundancies for failure, and then review and set these settings. And these settings are for the cluster wide. Now, next up, we'll look at some other workloads and how to mix those in. Selecting the Add Workload Profile in the top left here, we can add another profile. In this case, we've got some existing brownfield environments that we need to incorporate. And so we're going to select General Purpose VMs and General VMs. And we need to know how many VMs, how much capacity, and for this. So we're going to go take a look at our inventory. In this case, I've used a tool called an RV Tools. And we can look at the, the columns, and we can actually use the average function for the CPU. So we know the average VM has two cores. And we can also look at the average for the amount of memory that's been allocated. In this example, that's about 4.1 gigabytes. We can also look at capacity. Now you've got both provisioned and in use. In use, if then provisioning is being used, which is by default in vSAN, will show you how much is actually being consumed by the backend. So for this, we'll need to sum this. We can see we've got 22.6 terabytes. And just to be aware of how much has been provisioned, so worst case, if everything was used, we see we have 53 terabytes. So I'm going to add a little bit extra to that 22. and We'll probably go up to, say, 25 when we put this in. We'll enter those numbers. We have 130 virtual machines. We're going to put in 25 terabytes that we know that we're going to want to use here. And that's going, to, that's going to average that out and know that we need 192. And we're going to add the default RAM was all right, and CPU was close. We're going to add that 0.1. We're going to go back over to our spreadsheet. And we're going to look at the tab called tab hosts. And we're going to look at the number of vCPUs per core. Now, in this environment, we can see that that average is 7. Um, but maybe we wanted to be a little more conservative in this environment. We've got a mandate to reduce some pressure on CPU scheduling. So... Uh, we're going to drop that down uh, a little bit lower. We're going to go with 5. And now that we have that in, we look at the I.O. profile. We look at the RAID type. So in this case, we want to do a RAID 6. We've switched FTT to 2, selected RAID 6. Uh, we like the 4K fixed block, or the 70-30 read-write ratio, random workload, not sequential. And we can see it's recommending 26 different servers. It's recommending all flash 8 the following disk group configuration. We can see what type of drives, what type of performance class it's recommending. Um, if we go down, we can also see what the assumptions were that went into this. Um, so that could be things like what type of hosts. Uh, we know that it was assuming 24 drive base per server and so forth. Um, and we can also see what type of clock. Now maybe there may, we might have been limiting ourselves by the amount of RAM or something else. So if we want to go back, we could go edit that. Um, and go back to that cluster and change that. So maybe we decided that um, these assumptions were too conservative and we want fewer servers and we know, you know memory was, or CPU or storage was the bottleneck. Um, that's something that we could definitely change here. And note, hybrid and all flash were selected at the beginning, so that's a starting assumption in this case that this is all flash. In this case, I've, I've decided to do a smaller sizing. I'm looking at single um, rack unit servers that only have eight drive bays, so I've put that in. Maybe we've got a smaller provisioning in this environment. Uh, maybe we decide there's only a subset of these that we want to do in the initial wave. Um, in this case, we're going to cut that provisioning down a bit. And we're going to rerun that. And we're also going to change uh, what our RAID protection level is. Maybe this is a, a different workload that doesn't need the same availability characteristics. We can also revisit the I operation, the IOP size as well as the ratio. And this would allow us to look at a different recommendation based on changing those assumptions.